kids in the eleventh grade already. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's going to end up affecting basically everybody. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's talk Major League Baseball for a little bit. Um, I am very curious your thoughts on the idea of Major League Baseball isolating in Arizona. Uh, they would basically build a bubble, and nobody would get to leave uh, the city or the town or whatever it is. They have 10, 11, 12 different fields that they can use, and they can televise the season from all in one city. And they would do it by doing, you know, seven-inning doubleheaders, uh, et cetera. They're trying to get in as many games as possible. I know that you're familiar with Major League Baseball players and, and the yep. way that Major League Baseball operates, et cetera. What are the odds of something like this actually happening? You know, they, they came out and said that it's a detailed uh, thing that they haven't put all of it together yet. But, you know, Chris and I are both of the belief that something like this could work, but these guys would be uh, away from their families, away from everybody, for four to five months while they do a season. Now, Chris doesn't think that that's that big of a deal. I think some guys are going to, you know, not want to go that route. Uh, I don't know that you have to have everybody in favor of it, but I'm curious your thoughts on, on whether or not that's even feasible. Well, it, you know, it's creative as hell. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's possible. I mean, I think you have a lot of challenges. You know, one challenge is you don't really have quite enough fields, I don't think. You've got minor league fields and college fields. You know, maybe you're close. Um, there is the issue of playing at an empty stadium, which is a whole, you know, issue by itself, which we could talk about, you know, football, whether you could play NFL or college football in a, you know, stadium with no people. But let's leave that aside for a minute, uh, because baseball wants to start up sooner. And so you got to put, what, uh, 25 players on a team is 50. You got to have some umpires. You got to have some managers, coaches. Uh, I mean, you need people that, you know, the grounds crew, you got to have a couple hundred people near, near one another, co co you know, exist, coexisting with one another. Uh, you couldn't do it in California. Our governor has already said, you know, no, uh, no crowds until, uh, I think he said September. Uh, maybe he said later than that. Good gracious. So I assume they want to get started before September if they want to have a baseball season. Uh, I haven't heard the Arizona governor say anything one way or the other. So could you do it? Um, you need to account for the fact that some players might choose not to play because of the medical risks. And then, as you said, you, you may have players, you know, who have like a wife and a one-year-old and a three-year-old at home, and home is pretty far from Arizona, and they're going to find it a tremendous hardship, and the family is, to be um, be away from home, you know, isolated for five months. That's, that's or like or sort of, get, sort of getting shipped out yeah. to the Marines for five months. Yeah, exactly. That's you would be basically deployed uh, if you've got family members that are at risk for this virus, et cetera. Say somebody goes into the hospital and you need to leave, then do you end up being quarantined when you get back for fourteen days? I mean, had, there, I have no idea how this would even work, uh, but it is incredibly creative. And I mean, they're talking about doing this next month. They're talking about starting it up yeah, in I May. Mean, and look, the players want to play. You know, I'm in San Diego. You know, we got Fernando Tatis Jr. here. Manny Machado, they're, they're going to say, let's go, you know, give me a bat, get a pitcher on the mound, I want to hit. And they're going to like the idea on day one. Now, whether they like the idea, you know, after being locked up in Arizona for 90 days, that's maybe a separate question. But uh, you have to look at the financial side of it too, guys, I think. Let's, let's look at it this way. They, in ordinary course, they're paying these players a boatload of money. And uh, they're getting it back from television revenues, and from gate receipts. So now the proposal is, let's do something really creative. Let's go to Arizona, isolate all these players, and we're going to get some of the television money, certainly not all, and we're going to get no gate receipts, zero. And baseball is a game that relies on gate receipts. You know, in the NFL, they always say that uh, the TV money is so good that you could play it in empty stadiums and they used to say this, you know, just as a joke to make the point, the economic point. They weren't talking about the coronavirus. They were just making an economic point to play the whole NFL season with no fans. And the teams would still come out ahead. Uh, baseball, I don't think that's true. Because the, the TV contract is smaller. And they're selling a ton of seats, 162 games a year. You know, oh, yeah. Teams have 80 home games. They draw 30,000 people a game, 35,000. 
that's a lot of tickets sold, a lot of hot dogs, and a lot of beer. So what are they going to pay players? That's going to be negotiable too, right? If you play two-thirds of the season with no fans, I don't think they're going to pay them uh, full price. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I don't think it would uh... – I think the idea behind this would have to be that, okay, we're going to start in May, but by you know middle of July, maybe the 1st of August – we will get to go back to the home stadiums. That seems to be the only way financially that that would work. Uh, otherwise, I mean, at some point, you, you have to just completely renegotiate every contract because some of these guys make well, massive money. Well, you could, re- you could renegotiate the CBA, and that would, that would take care of that. You know, the way this works, if you look at it this way, uh, the, contract, the contracts would be valid except the CBA says the whole CBA is off, the collective bargaining agreement is off if there's a national emergency. And we have a national emergency. So all the contracts really are, are dead. Um, so they could negotiate them back in on whatever terms that the union would agree. They have, they have to, what I'm saying is they don't have to talk to 600 players. They have to talk to the union and its representatives. And if the union and management agree, for example, that they'll play in Arizona, and they'll pay every player half of his salary, and the union signs the contract, that's the deal. And you can play for half your salary, uh, or you can go home. And the owners, similarly, there'll be some, you know, hardline owners will say, I don't want to pay him anything. I, you know, I don't want to play in empty stadiums. I don't like Arizona. They'll be stuck, too. This is a kind of a majority rule situation. The owners make a deal through their commissioner. Players make a deal through their union, and they play. So... Nobody's going to Arizona until, um, you know, Rob Manfred and uh, Tony Clark get together with whatever assistance they bring along and come up with a, an idea of you know, how much do you pay Mookie Betts was getting some, I don't know, what's he getting? Like 30 year, an awful a lot year. of money. Yeah. Yeah, 30 million a year. How much do you pay a $30 million a year player for uh, a part of a season in Arizona? Uh, maybe you pay him $15 million. If you pay him $15 million, maybe you can afford to run a season. If you look at it backwards, you want to see if this if this makes any sense. I suggest look at it backward a little bit. What if they had last year's World Series, which was a pretty exciting seven game World Series, lots of drama, and they had it in a stadium with no people in it. Now, does that take the does that take the luster off the World Series? Uh, would people watch? Would people get excited? And if they would, you can have a World Series, you can have playoffs, and if you can have playoffs, you know, I guess you can. Make your way through the regular season. We've had seasons in all the major sports that we've missed a bunch of games. You know, NBA lockout killed two months. They started playing on Christmas Day in 2011. <clears throat> the NFL had a 60-day strike in uh, the early 80s, and uh, baseball missed 50 games in 1981. So we've had all three major sports miss essentially just under two months of play and have a season and have a championship, and there's a few people who want to put asterisks on those championships, but most people accepted it. Now, they didn't play in empty stadiums, so that that's the experiment. You know, Can you play two-thirds of the season and call it a season? I think the answer is yes from history. Can you play two-thirds of a season in empty stadiums in all in one state? We've never tried that experiment before, gentlemen. That's a, you got that right. Chris, you want to hop in here? No, I mean, I just think that we, yeah, we, we've we never, we're about to try a lot of things that we've never done before um, with this thing. A, we have technology that we've never had in the past uh, during pandemics in the past, and uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and we have a lot of things at our disposal today that we didn't have years and years and years ago. Um, and and I've always poo-pooed the idea that players aren't going to want to go. Well, they might not want to go, but if they want to collect a paycheck, they'll go. And I'm, I'm the guy that y'all, y'all brought it up that I'm not, you know, singing these sad songs for these guys because they got to be away from their families for four months because everybody in the military has done that their entire life, their entire careers. Okay. So if you can't do it one time because of some weird thing and get paid an absorbent amount of money, you're still going to make more than the average person's ever going to make in their life. Then, you know, I, I don't I don't know what river you want me to cry in, but I'm not going to do that. I just want <laughs> baseball back. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very 